pen lovers and stationery enthusiasts, it's Christy here, Snarky Wordsworth over on Instagram and Reddit, and today I am going to be doing my 2023 fountain pen collection video. Um, this is actually the third time I'm recording this. The first time, thought I was completely done, ready to roll, starting to edit, discovered that there were some pretty ridiculous uh, corruption issues in a couple of the segments when I tried to encode, did not work at all, scrapped that version. Went and recorded a second time, thought I was totally done. Sadly, audio issues that time, plus my neighbor's yappy dog was totally in there all the time, barking up a storm. So third time is a charm, right? Um, anyway, I'm going to try and run through the pens pretty quickly. I'll only like really focus on the ones that were kind of integral to my collection process or that have really interesting nibs. Uh, but I will talk a little tiny bit about all of them. Hopefully this will not be an obscenely long video uh, and it will at least be interesting. Fingers crossed. Um, a couple of my subscribers had asked me to do this earlier in November. I'm so sorry. I don't remember your names. If I can track them down, I will thank you in the comment or in the description. Uh, but I had held off because I had a couple of pens that were outstanding that um, I really wanted to include and those only just recently arrived. So that's why the big pause. Apologies. I know I did tell you that I would be putting this up a little bit earlier, but it is what it is, I suppose. Anyway, these are going to be organized by um, company. So uh, please do sort of just skip ahead in the timestamps if there's a particular pen that you are interested in. You don't want to go through the whole thing. Um, if you happen to have any questions, I'll talk about all this at the end, of course. Uh, please feel free to pop those questions in the comments and I will try and answer as quickly as possible. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm going to start talking about Parker's in just one moment. Okay, so I'm going to kick things off on my little fountain pen collection journey with my vintage Parker's. If you watch this channel frequently, you probably recognize that I don't talk about these pens all that much, but it doesn't mean that I don't absolutely love them. These are kind of where it all started as far as, you know, when my fountain pen journey actually began. This is not my very first fountain pen, but it is sort of to remind me of the very first fountain pen I ever had way back in the 90s. Um, this is the Parker 51 Demi in Cocoa. My original pen was the Parker 51 uh, in Cocoa, but it was the standard size, which is maybe a little bit more than a centimeter longer and certainly a little tiny bit girthier. But that was really my only fountain pen for better part of a decade, I want to say. Anyway, I unfortunately lost it uh, due to certain circumstances. If you're curious about that, you could always watch the video where I unbox this guy um, and I go into depth about the situation. Um, but yeah, I, I really love this pen. This is just such a sweet, smooth writer. Uh, I it's been so long, but I actually think it fits my hand a little bit better because it is a smaller pen. Um, this does have a 14 karat fine gold nib. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful writer. Really, truly. Um, these vintage Parkers just do such a good, consistent job. I never have problems with hard starts. Um, they just, they are, for me, what like that old school traditional fountain pen should be. And that's, again, I understand definitely a bit of a sentimental sort of feeling evoked from these, but I have had so much luck with them. I love them and definitely would recommend them. Um, my other Parkers are the Parker 45 GT. Uh, this one just has a standard uh, fine stainless steel nib, but I think I picked it up mainly because I really just loved this sort of two-tone cap and how it just sort of was a really striking contrast with this gorgeous dark teal. I just, I love a dark teal. Um, and while my pens generally st stay towards like the neutral end of things, I just couldn't resist. I also love the design of the nib. I just think it's really cool. Like one, I love hooded nibs to begin with, but I just, I love this sort of like black that juts out over the silver. It's just, it's just really cool. I don't know. Um, also one of those that writes really, really well. And then the last, if I were going to start collecting vintage Parker pens, it would be the Parker 75. Um, I think the more mainstream or more popular of the 75s is this is the Sisley. Uh, also 
forgive me, I have zero game when it comes to French, French pronunciation and a lot of like the fancy 75s are, including this one, which I believe is the Ecossais. Again, that could be entirely not the way to say it, uh, but I saw it on um, Howard Epstein's table at the Ohio Pen Show a couple of years ago, and I just fell in love with this like beautiful, beautiful plaid. Um, you can get this also in a sterling silver rather, rather than the gold, but I just, I just really like gold things in general. I, I just, I just do. Um, shiny in general is great, but gold shiny is even better than silver shiny for me. Um, this is an extra fine nib and boy, is it ever extra fine. It is so clean, so crisp, and it does not have any problems with hard starts. I've put lots of different inks in here and it just works really, really well. The other really cool thing about the, um, 40, the 75 is that it has this cool ability to turn, like you can turn the nib. So if you say have, uh, a grip that doesn't quite work well with the way the sort of, um, grippy bits are, you can still turn this nib to the side and then adjust the way the nib hits the paper. Fantastic for people who have a slightly oblique grip. Um, I have like a pretty straight on one, but it's still just a really amazing design point. Um, I love it. I just love the way it works. You know, I, it just, it's just a great pen and I love all of the different 75 designs. There's some really, really fantastically cool ones. There was one that was made from found Spanish doubloons from some shipwreck. Um, another one with these like really ornate, really gorgeous, uh, wood grains. It, it's just a really interesting pen if you're going to, uh, fall down the Parker rabbit hole of collecting. Definitely recommend the 75s and have definitely thought about it myself. All right, next up, these are my Jin Hows. This one might look kind of familiar because it is a dupe of the Parker 51. This is the Jin Hao 51A. Super creative, right? Um, this pen, along with this one were the pens that got me back into fountain pen collecting after about a decade hiatus. Um, so after I lost my original Parker 51, I just stopped writing with fountain pens. I hadn't really even been a collector before then. I just really loved that pen. And then on someone's Instagram or YouTube video, I don't even remember a few years, I saw this pen being used. And I was like, that looks a lot like my old school 51. Uh, and I discovered that Jin Hao was doing a lot of dupes at the time. And I thought, you know what? It's been a long while. Let's, let's just pick one up. And I found that I really liked it. Um, I honestly can't recall exactly how my very first 51 wrote, but I gotta say, uh, for a pen that is, I think this was under $5 at the time, it writes really, really well. It's super consistent. No problems with hard starts. It holds ink very well for long periods, even without use. Um, and it looks good. Like I, I really like wooden pens. Um, I don't have too many, but I love the way they look. Um, this one is in maple and this one is in the rosewood. They both have an extra fine steel nib, uh, right beautifully. And it was what got me back into writing with fountain pens. I liked these two so much that I started trying other pen companies and other pens. And, you know, I've fallen down that rabbit hole over the years and I still really, really love exploring new brands and new kinds of nibs. And really outside of that original Parker, these were kind of what kicked off the excitement again that, you know, that lit that fire that made me want to you know, play around with these again. So I will always be grateful to Jin Hao for that. Um, one of my other Jin Hao's is the X159. I have this in the ivory. Uh, if you like a large girthy pen, works great. Uh, this is a dupe for the Mont Blanc, uh, Meisterstruck 149. Uh, say what you will about dupes, but the one thing I like about them just across the board is that they give you a chance to sort of try dimensionally what a much more expensive pen might feel like. The nib is going to be completely different, but the size is pretty, pretty similar. So I 100% without a doubt can say the 
Meisterstruck 149 would be just too big for me. It's just too girthy. Um, it's a great pen if you like really thick uh, grips, but I just, I don't. It makes my hand really sore uh, after even short writing periods. Uh, the nib is fantastic. It, do it does write really, really well. I mean, you know, it does what it's supposed to do and it's lovely. It really is, but it's just not a pen for me. This is, this might be one that I, you know, uh, give away sometime in the coming year, but again, I would not know that the 149 was just too big for me without this one, you know, and this was less than $10. I think it was eight something versus over a thousand. So, you know, it's good to know. Uh, my other, uh, Jin Hao purchase is the Jin Hao 82, which is very clearly a dupe for the Sailor Pro Gear Slim. Um, I was just really curious as to how it wrote in comparison. I've always been a Sailor fan, so uh, I just wanted to try it out. You know, for a pen that runs anywhere from like I've seen three to or somewhere around eight dollars, it writes great. You know, it's it's not going to be a sailor pen. It, I'm not going to tell anyone that it is, but they're really cute. They come in a ridiculous number of colorways. I've seen some really beautiful ones that um, I probably would like to add to my collection at some point. And certainly these make great gifts, especially for people who aren't really like familiar with fountain pens because it's it's not hard to write with. It's a good universal size, especially if you post pens, um, comfortable weight, good solid stainless steel nib with just, as I mentioned, a ton of colorways. So, you know, great for beginners. Um, and one of those pens that gives you a chance to see if say a more expensive, uh, version would be worth trying, or if it's just too small to whatever for you, then good to know at a much lower price point. Okay, now we're finally on to pen brands that I talk about quite a bit more often. We are on to Caveco, and these are all sport pens. I only have the pocket pens from the company, but I am looking into some of the others. Uh, this was the very first Caveco pen that I ever purchased. I don't know if you can see in the video. Um, it's pretty dinged up. This was an everyday carry for me. Um, it comes in the fine nib. Um, and I just have it inked up with black because I do still use it. This is sort of my knockabout, not even everyday carry. I just, if I'm going to lend out a pen, sometimes this is the one that does it just because it's so, um, dinged up already. But these pens can take a beating if you really are looking for a pen that can survive. Um, this has fallen to the ground so much. I'm so embarrassed by that. Uh, but it's a great little pen. Um, super comfortable. I love pocket pens, but these ones are just, just fun and adorable. And they come in so many different colors. If you want something to collect, you've, you've got limitless <laughs> options here. Um, as I mentioned, this one is a fine nib, uh, within the classic black and gold. This is, uh, one of the, uh, Caveco collection sports supposedly like limited, but this has been you know, on sale for forever. So I don't really know how limited it is. This is in the dark olive. I love neutrals. We've talked about this many times. I love this color. It's a great pen. This one is in extra fine. Um, I will say sometimes the extra fines I find can be a little bit finicky, gorgeous, very, very thin line, but, um, some of my drier inks just don't work well in them. It does have some hard start problems. And I've found that across the board with the extra fines, uh, more so than any of the other nibs, but still great writer. If you use a wetter ink, no issues whatsoever. Um, this is, I love this one. I don't care if it really is limited or isn't. It's been out for quite some time and it's still pretty easily available. This is the one in iridescent. Um, and this has a medium nib. Yes, this has a medium nib. I love this thing. Um, I will put uh, shimmer inks in this a lot uh, and it works so well. Um, I have hit or miss trouble with Ferris Wheel Press a lot of times, especially they're really, really shimmery ones, but I never have a problem with the medium Caveco sport nibs. They just work really, really well uh, and they don't dry out. It's great. Um, yeah, just a really great pen. Now this one 
is my Caveco Sport in the Macchiato color. And this originally had a bold nib, but the bold nib was terrible. I, and it was not, I, I, I only have the one bold nib, so I don't, I don't really know what I can say about other bold nibs, but this one was just awful. And so I had, um, Kurt Spear from Penrealm grind it to an architect nib. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe, maybe focus. Oh, kind of. Uh, and I love this thing. I use this all the flipping time. Like this is just such a great, great nib. Um, it's just, it's just a great, great nib. I love this architect thing. If you write in all caps ever, this is the, this is the kind of nib you want. It just makes everything look really cool. It's so fun to write with. Um, but yeah, great one. And I also just love the color, this sort of like beigey, peachy pink, it's just beautiful. And then this is my baby. This is my everyday carry. I have it with my traveler's notebook in passport size uh, constantly. I never swap it out. I love this thing. This is the Caveco Brass Sport. It is just, it's just a fantastic pen. I do have it in the extra fine. As I mentioned across the board, certain dry inks don't work well in it, but I always put like um, Pilot, Iroshizuku's, and I, I love Fuyu Syogen in this. I use Kirasame in this. Um, I've used a couple of the uh, Diatramentous document inks, and surprisingly, those are pretty good for it. Um, I was really nervous that they would be um, hard starty all the time, but no, I've, I've had pretty good uh, luck with it. So fingers crossed that stays to, uh, stays uh, the case. But yeah, it's a very heavy pen. So if you don't like heavy pens, this one's probably not for you because it is brass. But I do happen to like heavy pens and it's just really comfortable and fun to write with. Um, I love the way that it looks. You know, it patinas over time just from your own hands, oils and whatnot. And even if it gets nicked or scratched or whatever, it just sort of adds to the character of the pen. It just it makes it look lived in. It doesn't look all sad and dingy like my first one. I mean, like if there were scuffs on it, like this is how the plastic looks. It's tragic. Whereas if there's scuffs on this, it just looks like it's lived a life and it doesn't look just sad. So um, if that's your thing, the Caveco Brass, I I can't recommend it more. It's, it's wonderful. Um, if you don't want to have to worry about wet or dry inks as much, I would definitely say maybe size up to a fine. But if you're like me and you really want that thin detailed line, just be smart about what inks you put in it and you shouldn't have a problem with an extra fine. All right, so we are moving on to what might be my very favorite fountain pen brand, and that is Pilot. I love Pilot pens, whether we're talking about their lower end beginner stainless steel nibs or we're talking about their higher end gold nibs. They just have some really beautiful, consistent writers um, with some fantastically interesting nibs available. It's just so much fun writing with a pilot and they, they just are such beautiful, beautiful pens, including this first one that we're going to talk about. So this is the Pilot Kakuno. It is definitely a beginner pen. Uh, at least it's marketed as such in Japan. And it's so cute and so lovely. This is the demonstrator version, but they have a ton that are in your standard opaque um, bodies. They have really cute, lovely pastel colors. They have some uh, primary caps as well. But the interesting and fun thing about them, let's see if I can get it to focus. Look at that smile. Look at that smile. Look at that tongue sticking out. I mean, every time I write with this thing, and I write with it a lot, uh, I look down at that nib and it just brightens my day. And who doesn't want a pen that will do that? Um, these come in your standard nib sizes and they're all really, really great. I've had extra fines. I've had mediums. I've had fines. It's, it's a very, very nice, consistent writer and a great way to sort of start your fountain pen journey. Uh, the other really lovely thing is that the Kakuno, and I don't even know that you have to take that out, but it uses the Con70 converter. I'm going to say something that might irritate some people who are fans of Pilot's Con40. I hate the Con40. Like I really, really hate it. So that says a lot about the pen company that I still use the pens that use the Con40 because 
it's for me just such an annoying <laughs> converter. Uh, whereas the Con 70, this thing, you pump it a couple of times, fills super easy. I think it was absolutely the best choice for a beginner pen. Uh, as far as converters go from Pilot, and it's just it's just a great, great pen. A lot of fun. Uh, it's one that I, I always try and have at least one in my collection. Um, I've had some of the uh, standard uh, opaque models that I've given away to friends who wanted to start with fountain pens or whatever, but I always have to have one, and this is the one that I've got right now with that medium nib, and it's, it's just a great writer. Love it. I don't foresee myself getting rid of this anytime soon. Next pen I want to talk about is the Pilot Prera. I adore the Pilot Prera. This is actually one of my favorite pens, period. Uh, it's certainly my favorite stainless steel nib in Pilot. Uh, it has the CM, and this thing is just wonderful. It's just, if you like writing with a stub style nib, but you want something that's a little thinner than that standard uh, 1.1 stub that most stubs are, this is just glorious. Um, the CM nib is so easy to write with. Um, I never have problems with it feeling overly scratchy. It's just, it's just really fun to write with. And this thing is almost always inked up for me. Uh, the only reason it's not right this second is because I just cleaned it. Um, and we'll be refilling it with another ink in just a little bit, probably right after I take, the, uh, finish filming this. Uh, but it's great. It is a small pen. It might not be great for all hands, but um, I think it's probably going to be perfectly fine for most people, unless you want a ginormous pen. Uh, it's delicate. It's light. It's really, really cute. I love the demonstrator styles. You can get these uh, demonstrator style pens with um, orange, green, blue. I can't remember if there's also like a yellow or a red, but you definitely can get it in those shades. And then um, the the ones that you directly can import from Japan. You can get an ivory, a gorgeous gray that I think I might pick up sometime soon, and then maybe a black as well. Um, so you do have lots of options if you don't like the demonstrator style too, but it's one pen that I would certainly recommend, especially this CM nib. Man, this CM nib is just something special. Okay, next pen. One of my all-time favorite fountain pens. This was the first gold nib that I purchased myself. This is the Pilot Elite 95S. Um, here in the States, it's usually marketed as the E95S because of some copywriting rules with the E versus Elite and whatever. Uh, but it's the same pen. And I have mine in the Champagne and Burgundy with a um, extra fine nib. And look at how beautiful this thing is. I just love the way it looks. It's just, it's a beautiful pen. It writes amazingly well. Uh, when you post it, while it is kind of a pocket pen size originally, when you post it, it's actually very long. Like this is like full size pen. You wouldn't even necessarily know that it started out as a pocket pen once it's been posted. Um, great weight to it. Uh, really classy look. And it just is a beautiful line when you're writing with it. I, I adore this pen. I highly recommend it. It also comes in just plain black. Uh, both versions, I think, are really classy and interesting. Uh, highly recommend it, especially if you want to dive in to gold nibs and you haven't before. Really quite affordable for a gold nib pen. Uh, but yeah, wonderful. We'll always have this in my collection. Next, this is my Pilot Decimo. Um, it's the, the debt for those who might not be familiar, the Decimo is simply a slightly thinner uh, vanishing point and it's a clicky. I have this in the extra fine. This is my like go-to work meeting pen, uh, especially when the meetings are long. Sometimes you just need to be able to fiddle with something and that clicky action, I'm telling you, it's a lifesaver. Um, I just find the mechanics of this thing so fantastic. I love I love the fact that clicky pens exist in the fountain pen world. Uh, I also really like the bounce to it. Not everyone loves the bounce. Um, and when I say bounce, it's not like when a pen has flex. That is not what this is. Do not try and use it as a flex pen. It's just when you write with it because of the way it's designed, there's a bit more give to um, the full nib Seg uh, segment as, as, as a whole. So it has a little bit of a 
soft feel, not a flex feel or not even a soft nib feel, but there, there's just something about the way it um, presses against the page. Uh, and I really like that. It makes me more conscious of the way that I write, even when I'm fast writing or jotting things down. Um, the extra fine is super extra fine. Um, I did have to look specifically for some wetter inks for it. I had some trouble with some dry inks and hard starts with the extra fine. But once I found like the happy spot for it, as far as like what is too wet, what is too dry, I, I've i loved it ever since. Uh, Iroshizuku's Yamabudo is my go-to in here, but I also use quite a few of Urban's uh, really pretty sort of reddish brown inks too. And they look, they work really, really well for me as well. But yes, love this one. Of course, because I'm a lemming, I had to get the black matte um, vanishing point. This is the one that like Lindsay Scribbles used and recommended. And, like I, that's just one person off the top of my head, but like everybody that I enjoy watching on YouTube or Instagram uses this. Um, but rather than get a standard nib, I got the SU nib and it's so much fun to write with. This is not an everyday carry for me, but if I know I've got something that I want to give a little flair to that I don't want to have to worry about like flex practice or anything, just like standard writing with just a little bit extra, this is the one I pick up. Um, definitely not as broad as a lot of, uh, standard stubs, which works for me. I like a narrower nib anyway, but still gives lots of, you know, character to all of my writing. And it's just a great nib. Um, and a lot of fun. I do love like that classy, super matte black finish. Uh, and for a long time, I thought maybe the traditional vanishing point was going to be too broad for me as far as the girth of the pen, but it's not, it's, it works really well. So even if you have smaller hands, don't worry, the standard vanishing point should be okay for you. Going along with SU nibs, uh, Sutabu, this is my Pilot Custom 742. Um, I wanted to try one of the Pilot uh, pens from that 74, 70, 742 and 743 line. And I ended up on this because it was like middle of the road as far as size goes. I'm so happy I did. I love this thing. It's so comfortable. This is um, a little bit larger than a lot of the other pens that I use, but man, it feels really good in my hands. Like it doesn't feel too um, heavy. It doesn't feel unbalanced. This is just an excellent pen. Um, I got it in that SU nib again because I liked it so much and I do love this one. Um, it is a little bit finny, more finicky than my vanishing point. So I do have to be careful about um, what inks I put in this. I do make sure that I use a wetter ink, uh, but anytime I do, man, it's glorious. Um, I use a lot of times I'll use Diamine's Writer's Blood or, you know, any of the Iroshizuku's, but anything I think wetter works very well in this. I have not had as much success with my driest inks. A lot of Robert Oster's tend to make it feel a bit, um, not scratchy, but close to it. <laughs> um, I've never felt like, oh, the paper's going to tear, but I've definitely felt like this could be a little wetter. This could use some white lining, lightning from Venice. Um, so yeah, make sure you stick with the wetter inks in it and you should be absolutely perfect if you are using a, a SU nib. Okay. Last from my pilot collection is my pilot Falcon. Um, I believe it's also called the Ilabo and this thing is so beautiful. I was so happy that I found it with the gold and black. I am just more of a gold person. I, I know that silver and black is really classic looking, but I, I love this color way more. Um, and I have it in the soft extra fine. I wasn't sure what to think. I knew that I loved the way the nib looked because look at this thing. How cool is this with that little beak to it, which is why I'm assuming Falcon. Um, but I love writing with this. I've seen some people use the soft uh, pens especially from the Falcon line as like flex pens. I don't think that I have the nerve to do that, but just naturally writing, it gives you some very nice light variation and it's such a fun writer. It just, it's really fun to write a long letter with this. Um, 
I, even though it's an extra fine, it's so smooth. It glides across the page. I'm, I've used both dry and wet inks in it and I've not had any problems. Um, it's just fun to write with and I like it so, so much. Um, right now I want to say I have Rora and Klinger's, um, gold grun in it and it looks amazing in this nib it's just it's just a lot of fun if you like light variation if you like a really smooth nib if you just like a fun writing experience this one is a really really good option so uh, moving right along to my handful of lammies this is a lammy lx this one is in the rose gold i really enjoy writing with this uh, i will say it's pretty much identical as the to the safari uh, and the AL, the all stars. So, you know, the price point differences are really for the colorways. And this one, the big difference, I suppose, is in that nib. Let's see if you can focus. It is that black coated nib. And I've read somewhere that it's supposed to have a different feel as it writes across the page. I, as someone who's used safaris and all stars, I, I, I kind of feel that's like the difference is negligible, but you know, maybe different people will feel differently. Um, I do really like the way these nibs write, but I really enjoy the way the safaris write too. So again, eh. um, I love the colorways with the LX line though. This rose gold is just so cutely pinky metallic. I also have it in the standard gold. Rose gold is in the medium nib and the regular gold is in bold. I use uh, a lot of shimmer inks in these. They are a workhorse with shimmer inks. Even shimmer inks that do not work well in some of my other pens work very well in these, especially that bold. Man, anything will run through this guy. Um, they're fun to write with. They look nice anytime you are trekking about and you need a, a shimmer ink with you. I like bringing these guys along. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommended. Uh, my other, one of my other Lammies is this Lammy Vista. I just love a demonstrator. Again, pretty much the exact same pen. Um, the other really great thing about this style of Lammy is that those nibs are so easy to swap out. This has the uh, calligraphy 1.1 in it. Um, definitely a little sharper than a stub, which is no surprise, uh, but I still really love writing with it. Um, I use a wet ink with this and it works beautifully. Um, and it looks, it just looks good. Uh, I still have the question, why do I need the ink window in the demonstrator? I get, it's just like, again, the same exact model as all the other ones. So why change it? But it's a demonstrator. It's clear. I can see how much ink is in that converter. Uh, the converter for the Safaris, All Stars, and uh, LXs, and the Vista, of course, are great. I have never had any trouble with them. They're just a good standard converter. This is the Lamy 2000 Stainless Steel. I adore this pen. Um, I love the way that it's just so super streamlined, so minimal. Um, the texture is like a slightly brushed stainless steel and it just looks amazing. Um, it's got that classic hooded nib. Um, you'll notice there's a little bit of like that burping ink from the nib. That's because I wasn't careful when I, uh, pulled the ink, which I just did last night. Um, hot tip. If you, if you drop a little bit of the excess ink once you've done that first piston pull, this does not happen. Um, I was in a rush. That was my bad. Uh, but it writes a treat. It does have, this one does have the extra fine nib, but extra fine nibs in the Lamy 2000 do run a little bit broader than say like your standard extra fine nib, which is totally fine with me, but just be aware. Uh, but yeah, so much in love. I just adore this thing and I write with it all the time. Okay, and on to my small platinum collection. This is a fantastic, fantastic beginner pen. It's also a really great knockabout pen. Uh, it's the Preppy Wa, and this one is one of their traditional print designs. I love this, and the black and gold just looks so cool and so smart. Um, even though it is just one of their lower end stainless steel pens, you can see that it has that patented kind of a springy uh, nib enclosure that is supposed to keep the nibs from drying out. And I've got to say, I don't use this pen 
all the time. As I mentioned, it is like a knockabout pen for me uh, when I just need to throw something in my bag or I just want to have sort of like a decoy pen. Uh, I'll use this one. And even if I go a couple of months without writing, it never hard starts. It's kind of crazy. That is ridiculously cool. Um, this one is a fine nib, I want to say. Yes, this is a fine. It's super duper um, comfortable to write with. Like this size, whether we're talking about unposted or posted, and I do tend to post my pens. It never feels unbalanced. Uh, and it just looks cool. It's just a really sharp looking um, beginner pen that is a consistent writer and that will not hard start on you, at least not in my experience. So love that. Um, my next one I received actually last year in the um, fun tier of the Reddit Fountain Pen Santa Secret Santa. This is the Platinum Placer in teal. It's a metal pen, as you can see, and it's really, really very pretty. I do not write with it a ton, not because it's not a great pen. It really is. Uh, I just, I don't know. It's, I think, a little too bright for me. I, I don't know. It's, it's not even that bright. It's just, it doesn't really go with my aesthetic, but it is a really good writer. This has the medium nib in it. Um, this might be one of the ones that I let go this year. I'm not hundred percent sure. I want to give it another try, but it is an excellent writer, super consistent. And it does have that same, um, pen technology, nib te technology, uh, that, and it, it writes like a dream, even when I haven't written with it for ages and ages. This is my newest platinum collection edition. This is the Kunidas in the uh, graphite smoke, I want to say. And I got this in this year's Elite Secret Santa from Reddit. Uh, really fun to write with. I just recently inked it up and finished quite quickly, actually. And I like it a lot. Uh, I want to do like a comparison with the vanishing point. And I don't know if it's really a fair comparison since this is a stainless steel versus the gold nibs. Uh, but it would be interesting if I had like a very set uh, list of criteria that I wanted to compare the two. Uh, this one is really cool. It's got a bit of a chunky body. So if you like a little bit of a thicker pen grip, this might be really perfect for you. Uh, writes really, really well, like all Platinums really do. Uh, and has like an, a really interesting sort of industrial look to it, which I do love. Uh, so yeah, that one's the Cordidas. Oh, and this has the an extra fine nib. It is crazy extra fine. I love it. Uh, so yeah, if you like a really fine nib, the extra fine in the Kuridas is A+. Plus. And then my last one within my platinum collection is this lovely. So this is the 3776 Celluloid Sakura. I fell in love with this the very first time I saw it. Look at that pink. Oh, and there's almost like a snake skinny look to it. At least there is to me uh, that I just think is absolutely gorgeous. I love, love, love the look of this pen. Uh, it writes so well. And let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Look at that little heart for the breather hole. How cute is that? I just, I love that so much. Um, it is a very hard gold nib, but I kind of like that for a lot of uh, different kind of writing uh, purposes. It is one that I love bringing in to work uh, just because it's sort of like a statement piece. And I've definitely had clients like ask about it before, which is really nice, but it still is like that hard kind of pen nib uh, so I can write really fast, jot things down for notes and it just works really, really well. I absolutely adore this one. I will never get rid of this. Not ever. Okay. This one is for all the demonstrator lovers. This is my Twisby collection. This guy was the first Twisby that I ever picked up and it is the Twisby diamond mini in the AL colorway. It's such a delightful, delightful pen. I have this in extra fine and I just adore it. It is such a comfortable pen. There's, there's definitely a nice weight to it, even though it's a pocket pen. And I just, it's got such a good fill amount for me. Not too much like a lot of piston pens, but just enough so that I'm not on, constantly worried about it running out. Um, just, and it writes beautifully. It really, really does. So it has the looks, it has, you know, the fill capacity. It's just a really, really good, good pen. And I love 
Twisby nibs. They are so, so comfortable to write with. I love the way my writing looks with it. So yeah, that was the first Twisby in my collection. I also... <laughs> I also have the Twisby Diamond Mini in the rose gold because why not? Um, writes, you know, essentially the same, has the same fill capacity, looks really great with just that rose gold finish. But this one I decided to get with the stub nib. And I love this thing. It's just so comfortable. It, stub nibs can be more or less scratchy than the others. They can be broader or... Or, or narrower. Uh, it, 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 it seems to be one of those things that each brand has its own sort of go-to. And Twisby's just works so, so well for me. So again, great looking pen that writes really beautifully, excellent ink capacity. Uh, the one thing that I will say I get a little nervous about with these minis, that um, O-ring at the bottom I have had slide off and I've just had to be quite careful about making sure that it's always there after I pull it from, say, a pen case. Uh, but that's really the only thing I've ever had any kind of real concerns with is that um, little O-ring slippage. I have not, knock on wood, had an issue with cracking or anything like that. Um, so here's hoping we keep that trend alive. Um, another of my Twisbees is the uh, clear Twisby Eco. I just think it's a great, great pen. This is another of my Twisby stubs. And I actually think that this stub writes even smoother than the Diamond Mini. Um, I don't know if that's just in my head. It just happens that I've had this one for a little bit longer or what. But this is just, if you've never used a stub nib, that the Twisby Eco stubs are fantastic. Um, this one is, of course, like the demonstrator and clear all the way through, which I really, really like. I'm strongly considering getting the Eco in the cream and the rose gold, but do I really need, need it? I don't know. Uh, again, excellent fill capacity, fills a little bit more than, say, the minis, of course, but it, it's not so much that I stress out about it. Additionally, since it is a stub, it does go through ink a little bit more. So I, I'm never like tired of the ink by the time it finally runs out. So the Twisby uh, Go. This one is a good one if you are looking for uh, sort of a bit knockabout pen style with a good nib. I have this in medium. I used to really, really, really well with uh, shimmer inks and sheeners. Never have had any issues with either of those kinds of inks in here and uh, just great for that kind of purpose. Finally, my last Twisby. This is the Twisby Vac Mini. Um, it's just a fun pen to write with and to fill. So this is in your standard fine, really nice nib, as with all of my Twisby nibs. But it's that Vac fill capability that is just so much fun. Um, I, I don't know that... It's one of those pens that I, I have to have another and another and another like some of these other ones, but I'm really happy that I have this one vac filler in my collection because again, just that whole process of like watching the ink suddenly flood in, just just a fun, fun uh, aspect of the process that you don't get with other pens. So fun and beautiful. And we are now on to my collection of sailor pens. Sailor pens are so much fun. They really just are so much fun to collect. It's hard to stop once you start. Uh, and, you know, it's one of the ones that I know I will probably never completely be done with simply because they're always putting out interesting new colorways. And now I fall in love with the 21 carat nibs and so on and so forth. So, yeah, I don't foresee my Sailor collection at an end in any point soon. Uh, this first pen I want to talk about is the Pro Color in the Stardust colorway. This camera is not going to pick it up to the extent that it does in real life, but it's got this gorgeous, gorgeous sort of like galaxy shimmer going on. I adore this pen. It's my only sailor with a stainless steel nib and it writes amazingly well, super consistent. Um, I use this a lot in my travel work uh, escapades. It's got a fine nib in it and boy is it ever fine. Um, works really, really well. Not scratchy. Feedbacky is all get out, but not scratchy at all. Um, 
It's just really, really nice. I also love the converters for Sailor work really, really well and don't make you have to, um, you know, really go through all kinds of mechanical escapades to get a full pull of your ink from your ink bottle. But yeah, I really like this one. Uh, would definitely recommend it to people just sort of getting started with sailors if you didn't want to, you know, jump into the gold nib se uh, side of the pool at first. Uh, these ones are really, really great. And they come in quite a few colors. The 1911 standard that I have here is in the ivory. Uh, this one is a fine nib, I want to say. Are you fine? Yes, this is a fine nib. Um, it's the 14 karat, uh, just a really good, reliable, classic, classic pen and look. I love this uh, sort of very warm uh, ivory tone with the gold. And again, with that fine nib, it's super fine and it's feedbacky uh, as sailors are wont to be. And I just, I really like it. Okay, this is my 1911 light in uh, shining blue and it's a lovely color i mean that's what i was drawn to at first there's it's sort of between a blue and a purple with this lovely little bit of a prismatic shimmer to it um, and it does have that 14 karat gold nib i originally got this guy in extra fine loved it super duper fine nib man like that extra fine is just ridiculous uh, almost needlepoint lent it to someone who, I don't know what happened, came back to me not writing well at all. Uh, so I went and brought it with me to a pen show. Richard Binder took a look at it and he fixed this puppy up, man. Um, it writes beautifully now. Uh, it's really, really very, very fine, almost needle pointy like it was originally, but actually writes even better now that he's tuned it and everything. It's just, it's a glorious pen. Um, I, I just really, really like it now. I've been using it pretty steadily, uh, since it's been adjusted and I just, I, I adore it. I adore this pen. Um, I don't know that I would recommend the extra fine sailor nibs to everybody because I have heard several friends say that they found them a little too borderline scratchy. Um, I know that my, uh, tuned one is certainly not scratchy, but I don't even think before it was tuned that it was, that scratchiness was an issue when I first picked it up and loved it. It definitely is feedbacky, but there is definitely a difference between the two. Um, this lovely is my Sailor Pro Gear Slim in Dragon Palace. This has that gorgeous, very light jade with that very subtle gold shimmer in it. And it is also a um, 14 karat gold nib. This one is in the medium fine. Focus. And it's just a really nice, consistent writer. I like it a lot. Um, won't be getting rid of it anytime soon. I had never tried a fine gold sailor nib before uh, in the for the uh, Progress Slim. And I love this color, this sort of like bluey gray. Uh, this is from one of their seasonal designs and it's uh, koi. I'm not really sure why it's koi and gray, but whatever. Anyway, gorgeous looking pen with a really, really nice, nice nib. Um, I actually think it's an even nicer fine than the uh, 1911 standard that I have, but really great writer. I think it's beautiful looking and there is, it's really hard to see, but there is also a shuttle, subtle, shuttle. <laughs> There's also a subtle shimmer to this too. I know not everybody likes shimmer. I know in fact, a lot of people hate it, but I, I again, like shiny things and I, I really enjoy the fact that it's so subtle in this and you just get a hint of it when the light reflects. I adore pocket pens and this Sailor pocket pen is just glorious. This is the Progear Slim Mini in Iron Gray um, from the newer batch. So uh, the original batch had a, I want to say a black grip section, uh, but this one is just all that same iron gray resin. The uh, medium fine nib is lovely in this. And once you post it, it's wonderfully comfortable in the hand, looks super sharp and writes really, really well. Thank you, Lau from Ken Chan Crafts for uh, letting me know about a sale that was going on on Amazon for this. Uh, this is Autumn Drizzle 
and it is amazing. One, how beautiful is this pen? I love that the bottom and the finial both have this little tiny bit of uh, translucent pink, slightly shimmery resin and this matte lavender grayish tone. It's just, it's just gorgeous. This is a beautiful pen, but I love the most. And I did not realize as I never used this kind of nib before. The Sailor 21 Carat is amazing. Um, most of the time the Pro Gears have the 21 Carat, but for whatever reason they put the pro, the 21 Carat in this slim and I just want more of them. <laughs> um, hopefully they will decide to put more 21 Carats in their Pro Gear slims, but if not, I may have to bite the bullet and venture into their slightly larger pens just because this nib is amazing 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 highly recommended the 21 karat uh but yeah okay finally on to my last section of pens these are sort of my miscellaneous brands uh which don't take that to mean that I don't I think less of any of these brands it's just I only have one or two examples from each so I thought I'd sort of lump them all together this first one here is the Benu Euphoria this is one of my absolute favorite pens, especially now that I've had the nib treated. But yeah, so I don't know if anyone has noticed while I've talked about my collection, I have a very specific colorway that I generally sort of tend to stray towards. Um, super into neutrals, definitely love like more tempered tones. So a lot of Benu's colorways just aren't for me. You know, they've got that great, crazy, bright colors and they're beautiful, but I just, it's just not my thing. So when I saw this, I had to have it. Um, this is the Goulet Pens exclusive Ice Caramel Latte colorway, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, for me, the Euphoria is quite a large pen but it is so comfortable to write with. Originally, I ordered this with a broad nib. Whoa. <laughs> um, Schmidt nibs, I have found, are incredibly wet. Beautiful writers. Man, so smooth. It's a stainless steel nib, but man, it writes like a glassy pelican. It's crazy. Uh, so since the broad nib was just a little too big, I thought maybe I'll swap down to a medium. Picked up a medium. <sighs> still way too wet, way too broad. And at the time when I thought to swap down again, fines were really pretty hard to come by. And so I brought it to a pen show and had it ground into a uh, medium cursive, cursive smooth italic. And good grief, this thing is amazingly fun to write with. Um, right now I have it inked up with Vinta's Burnt Sugar, which is of course a shimmer ink. Um, and it just, it's just amazing. It's so fun to write with. It makes my handwriting look wonderful. And it's just, it's just incredible. I am so excited to have this. Um, still writes super wet, but not the, having it ground into that cursive uh, smooth italic makes it just a little bit easier for me to control the way my letters look because uh, there were definitely times when things just looked like a hot mess <laughs> with my teeny tiny writing and that wet wet um, nib so yeah highly highly recommended uh, if you are sort of a tiny writer I would certainly think about looking at that fine nib instead of the medium or broad just because like I mentioned it's a gusher but I love this pen. It will never leave my collection. I adore it. Um, this has got to be probably my favorite nib in my entire collection. This is the Esterbrook SD in the Esterbrook exclusive cola colorway. I love this thing. It's beautiful. It really does look like soda in a glass with ice. Just gorgeous. Um, and then I chose to get a journaler nib for it. This thing, it just writes like a dream. I love it. It makes my handwriting look incredible, like really special. And it's just so fun to write with. Uh, anytime my handwriting looks good, I'm going to think the pen is fun to write with. But this one, there's just something about it. Um, everything from the way it looks to the way it feels in my hand, it's got that cool springy action. Um, 
so that the nib stays nice and wet even when you're not using it it's just it's just a fantastic pen i would recommend it to anyone um, it's a little bit larger than a lot of the other pens in my collection but because the grip section is quite narrow uh, works really well in my hand whether we're talking about uh, unposted or posted i always post it but and i mean it feels fine regardless of what uh setup i've chosen for the day but yeah highly recommended any of the estes it will probably work for most people but that journal or nib is a must-have okay this guy is my edison glenmont in silver lake um it's one of those diamond cast blanks so it looks incredible probably my flashiest pen actually but still with a little bit of subtle um subtle style to it at the same time uh i originally got this with a 1.1 stub nib it was great but i wanted to try something a little bit different so i finally picked up a fountain pen revolution ultra flex this thing is wicked fun to write with um i do sometimes have a little bit of railroading if i'm going a little too hard and a little too fast with my flexing but as long as i'm conscious of it it doesn't really do that um i've definitely thought about picking up the jovo compatible um ebonite uh ultraflex and seeing if that helps even more but really just a really great pen with a fun fun nib beautiful look to it it's just it's great highly recommended edison pens are beautiful uh and brian over at the edison pen company is just a lovely person to work with all right this is my only italian pen this is the maiora this is the alpha line in the oro grigio colorway i think this looks so cool i've been wanting to get into italian pens for so long but i just I have no idea what I'm doing with them. I don't know any of the parameters I'm supposed to be looking for from the different companies. This one, I just, it just caught my eye. I, this sort of weird color blocking resin, just so cool. And I love like the overwhelmingly ornate gold band, um, and this cool little spinny clip end, uh, which I guess is like really iconic with this particular pen uh, and the company that it originally came from, which if you're interested in that, definitely take a look at the review that I did for this one. I have this in a 1.1 stub. It was originally, it definitely was a bit scratchy originally, but I sort of worked around, uh, played around with it. And it's now in a state where I absolutely love the way that it writes. Um, really comfortable in the hand, a little bit girthier than a lot of my other fountain pens, but still not something that is outsized, certainly nowhere near as big as like my uh, Jin Hao 159 or X 159. Um, there's a nice weight to it when you, when you post it, uh, though tends a little back heavy, but not so much that it's a distraction. It's just a nice weight, like I said. Uh, and yeah, I, I, it's just a really, really cool pen. Um, and it does make me want to try out some of the other Italian companies to see how I feel about those. Okay, now my pelicans. I have only recently gotten interested in pelicans um, because I, I've heard most people say like the nibs are very, very wet. They tend to run a little bit broader than a lot of other Western nibs, so on and so forth. But I just wanted to give it a try. So I picked up this M400 in the white tortoise because one, it's gorgeous. And two, it still has that classic semi-translucent barrel. You can actually see the ink inside that piston flowing. Maybe not in this video because let's be real, how unlucky am I when it comes to that kind of thing? But I loved the colorway so much that I decided, what the heck, let's give it a try. If nothing else, I can sell it at a later date. I am not going to sell this. This pen is so much fun. I have it with that medium nib and it has that gorgeous sort of bicolored silver and gold look to it. And it is a uh, gold nib, so it, it does have a nice softness to it when you write. Um, it is also definitely way broader than any medium nib I have ever written with in my life. But I just, it's so smooth. It's I, it's unreal how smoothly this thing writes. Um, I definitely also want to try one in the fine or extra fine if I ever, you know, get to that point where I want to 
invest in that much. But this thing, man, if you're looking for a smooth writer, nothing can be smoother than this. This it's just, it's like butter chef's kiss for real. So it's a really cute, small pen that perfectly fits my hand with a very nice nib. Looks amazing. It's just really interesting sort of like conversation starter kind of pen to have with you. I love it. Having fallen so in love with my M400, I was really curious about the vintage pens from Pelican. I am sort of like a goober and know nothing about vintage Pelican pens outside of what I've seen in a handful of videos. So I went to the Ohio Pen Show and ended up uh, talking to this great guy who was so knowledgeable. He's like the penguin is his sort of like moniker. And he told me if I was interested in starting out with some vintage Pelicans to pick up a 140. And I am so incredibly grateful that he did. I'd been looking at vintage um, 400s and it, they were just like a little bit out of my price range considering, again, I have never really experienced a vintage pelican i didn't really know anything about them or how like that really super soft vintage nib would work with my handwriting so you know the fact that he was willing to be like you know these ones are in a much lower price point but they're so beautiful and fun to write with and boy is it it's i don't know that you would consider it a pocket pen but i kind of classify it with that as far as my collection goes it's right at the top end of pocket pen size but then when you post it it's a nice comfortable normal size it's just a really really cool pen that classic um, black and green stripe and it does have that light translucency so you can see where the ink is in the barrel I have this with a fine nib and boy is it soft it is like super soft you don't even try and press to do any flex but it's gonna flex on you it's got that cool ebonite feed going on it's just it's great it is wicked wet though so definitely be aware of that other than that though the 140 is just a glorious little um vintage pen that i will never get rid of as, as well I, I adore this thing the last two i'm going to talk about are my two newest acquisitions this one is the traveler's company fountain pen in brass I had no idea how much I would love this. I've been writing with this consistently since I picked it up. Um, it is just glorious to write with. I found out from uh, one of my subscribers, thank you so much uh, for letting me know that it's actually a Schmidt nib. Uh, it's a fine nib, but as, a, as we learned from the Banu experience, Schmidt nibs write very wet. Uh, so this fine Schmidt nib is just incredible. Uh, you can see... It's got, no, maybe you can't focus, focus, maybe. Well, it does say Traveler's Company on it. Uh, and it's, it's, there's no breather hole or anything. It's super streamlined, super simple, but wicked, wicked good writer. I mean, this line just, it, it glides across the page. It's just so smooth. Um, even though it's a fine, you can see plenty of ink characteristics with it. Um, I have Goose Papon in here right now, and it looks amazing. Um, you can see all of the different shades that go into the ink. It's it's just glorious. And I love that it's um, a brass pen. Uh, so it's going to patina as time goes by. Scratches are not going to be a big deal. It's an easy, everyday carry. It also happens to be significantly lighter than the Caveco Brass Sport. So if you want a brass pen, but the Caveco is too heavy for you, definitely consider this one. Again, that nib is the big selling point, you know, glorious, glorious nib. Okay, last pen I'm going to talk about today. This is my Franklin Christoph 45 XLV. I adore this thing. I just recently picked it up. And I'd been looking at Franklin Christoph pens for so long, but then during their holiday drops, they popped this guy out and it's in that exclusive charcoal cream color. And it's amazing. I love the way this writes. I decided to pick up the um, fine cursive italic uh, from Nagahara. This just looks amazing on the page. It's really, really comfortable to write with. Um, light pen, you can um, make it into a dropper, but right now I just have a cartridge in here. Uh, writes beautifully. This nib is just glorious. I I would love to get another one uh, in the medium. I definitely want to try their SIGs, but yeah, I just, I can't recommend this nib enough. It's just a five. Uh, but it, it writes wonderfully well. Um, 
I know that the 45 also comes in a couple different sizes you can get in um, a large and then I think the 46 is essentially the same but it can fit a converter and I think it also has a six number six nib if that's something that's important to you so if you like the look of this one but want something just a little bit bigger you have that option I definitely am looking at some other designs from uh, Franklin Kristoff because I just think they make some really really interesting looking pens uh, but I absolutely adore this one and would 100% recommend this along with those Nagahara nibs. All right, so that is about it for my 2023 fountain pen collection video. If this video has been at all interesting, entertaining, useful, please, please, please consider hitting that like or potentially even subscribe button. Um, if you happen to have any questions about any of these pens, if you have any recommendations for me, also leave those in the comments. I love, love, love hearing from people who are also avid fountain pen fan friends. So, you know, feel free to strike up a conversation. There's nothing I enjoy more than chatting about fountain pens and other stationary related hobbies. Um, so as always, thank you so, so much for joining me. If you have made it to the end of this video, you are beyond awesome because I know this has been a long, long, long video. Um, and I appreciate the fact that you join me, that you are willing to share your time with me. And I hope you know how much fun I have putting these together for you uh, and will hopefully be able to bring some really, really fun content in the new year. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and sign off one more time. Thank you so, so much. Uh, happy holidays. Happy New Year. And I will see you next time. Bye-bye.